But, you know, going back to Juan Soto, I think that definitely should be a contract that needs to be worked on now. That should be one of the first priorities, if not the first priority. Um, what I think might be difficult is legitimately keeping him in a Padres uniform for more than five, six years after 2024. And the reason I say that is because I think in order to get his services, I, I think in order for the Padres to get his services, I think they should include opt-outs. And that's not bec because Juan Soto's, the, the market might change in five, six years. It's probably very well going to change in five, six years. If Juan Soto can make 35, 40 million in those five, six years, and then let's say he's still one of the top hitters of all time. He can go ahead and make 45, 50 probably in, in those upcoming years. So I think in order to be able to keep Juan Soto, put an opt-out in his contract, um, basically assure that this window is going to be prolonged for at least five, six years. By doing that, you have Xander Bogarts, Fernando Tatis, um, Manny Machado, Juan Soto, Joe Musgrove, probably you Darvish, a lot of guys locked in through this championship window, and you're going to win a lot of games just by having those guys locked in your lineup and the front of your rotation, maybe even the middle part of your rotation. But that's where developing is going to come in, um, and I'm sure the Padres will work and do a lot of work in terms of finally being able to develop guys. But, you know, having four cornerstones in your lineup and and two formidable pitchers in, in your rotation is going to be – huge for for the Padres and that's why I kind of think it's going to be smart for the Padres to kind of have a player friendly contract rather than okay well we want him around for this long um no opt outs no nothing because you want to favor Juan Soto remember his agent is going to get him as much money as he possibly can so um include an opt out make it a sure make it like a 12 13 14 year deal give him an opt out after 6 I think I think Juan Soto will be open to that. I, I feel like that's definitely the case too. And and I think it's interesting. That, that's what I wanted to ask you next was like, okay, what do you think how this impacts Juan Soto? What do you think the Padres are kind of looking on that end of the contract? Um, and Juan Soto has two years left on his deal. I would even go out to say, I think it would be a huge win if the Padres could keep Juan Soto for two more years after that. Imagine if yeah, that's yeah. two years down the road. Yeah, like he uh -huh. signs – a uh, 10 year, $400 million deal or whatever it is. That, that seems about right. I don't know. I'm just kind of, yeah, off the top of my head. and there's, you know, after two or three years, there's an opt out, a player opt out. He can opt out if he wants. If he walked after that two or three years, like you would still be adding two to three years of prime one Soto. So that's a, that's a win in itself. So I don't know. I, I like the idea of bringing him back honestly for any amount of time. Um, I'm trying to see. So Juan Soto right now is. Me 23 he's going to be 24, 24. next year mm -hmm. so if you kept him the next four years you get 24 25 26 27 that that's a pretty good win right there right like yeah <laughs> yeah mean, i mean you you, you got to maximize that that you know, that little trade you know that trade that you made um it's gonna look a lot better the more the longer you can keep them the better it's gonna look every year every year you every, add is like yeah. oh that's good yeah yeah so. exactly so, I expect I mean, him to do something similar. What, what yeah. would you kind of guess that he like they would be trying to discuss? Maybe not right now, but let's say after this season. I, I know it depends if Soto plays well. I have a feeling he's gonna have a damn good year. Like, let's say he has a really good year. What do you think the Potters are gonna go up there and like realistically offer him? Yeah, uh, you know, the, I'm glad that you brought up after this year because it's very unlikely coming off the year he had, and it wasn't a bad year. It was just wasn't the over 300 batting average with a crazy OPS plus and on base percentage Juan Soto type year. That was 2021 with a second place MVP finish. Um, Cause this year it was just, you know, like an eight something OPS and I say just, but you know, it wasn't the Juan Soto that we know. Um, so let's say he goes back out there and puts up another top five MVP finish, maybe even wins the MVP. I could see, 12 for 480. I like that. 12 for 480 with an opt out after five or six. I'm trying to do some math. Let's see. 40 million a year. That's 40. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. You got the. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, and you but say I, opt out after like like halfway through, roughly. Yeah, twelve for forty. That. Opt out halfway through. He just can't, you know. I'm I'm really gonna. I'm just gonna assume that he's gonna have a top three, top five MVP finish, if not win the MVP, because that's what Juan Soto does. Like his numbers are absurd. It was just a down year last year. It was a year where he was surrounded with no help in Washington. Had nobody around him. Gets traded midseason. Had to adjust to one of the hardest parks to hit in in all of baseball come to a division that's much better much better hold on no it's not much better it's actually a little worse uh, i forgot that he was with the mets and the braves and, and the phillies but yeah it's a rough division to be sitting in yeah, that is, ah. especially on the nationals <laughs> yeah exactly so um but just a lineup with no protection that you know no protection provided to him um but now, Fernando's back. Xander's in the lineup. Um, no, Big Nelly Cruz is in the lineup now. Uh, you know, they, they made some additions in the lineup. He's going to have a lot more protection than he's ever had. And I firmly believe he's going to finish with like a 950 OPS, um, like 32 home runs, 30 home runs, something like that, and like a 160, 170 OPS plus. And that's a $40 million player. Yeah, it's funny that everyone talks like about how like oh, Juan Soto wasn't himself last year. On the Padres, he posted a 778 OPS. How many years of our lives growing up would that have been Ooh, either the best or the, the second best? best <laughs> <laughs> like almost every year, right? Yeah. But, like that's that's wild, and like that was like a really like you could see him getting frustrated from like his struggles, even though he's still playing above average. Um, but it's pretty crazy that that's like. Oh yeah, he like fell off at the second half of last year. It's like, well, not really. Like when most guys fall off, they're having around like a six hundred ish OPS level, like for a, for at least a duration of time. Whereas one said it's like, yeah, no, he was still like solid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was he just was, not was. a god at the plate. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think that seems about right. I think forty mil, forty mil seems right. I think forty yeah. mil, twelve years. If you offer him twelve years opt out either six years or maybe a little bit before that. I think that could potentially be a win for both sides too, because he might actually leave after that opt out where like Manny, it felt like he was definitely staying like you're still getting Juan Soto throughout his prime, which I think is, is huge. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely think that that becomes a bigger priority. Uh, another question for you. Do you think this, do you think this will make like not only this deal, but the Darvish deal, and the Machado deal, and that we expect them to really want to extend Juan Soto, does this kind of take them off of the uh, Otani train in a way, or no? I think now it's between one or the other, Juan Soto or Shoei Otani. Um, what about I Vlad? Mean, uh, that's a good one. I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i really opposed to paying a first baseman a lot of money. Um. <laughs> And that's not just due to Eric Cosmer. It's just because I feel like there's a decent amount of um, first basemen that that have some slug, and and it's probably one of, if not the easiest positions to play on the field. It's not a premium position. Um, Vlad Jr. is a great bat, but Juan Soto is a better bat. Shohei Otani is a better bat um, and a better pitcher, um, you know, a pitcher in general. Uh, but yeah, I, I also just don't think Vladdy is going to leave from Toronto. I think they're going to do everything they can to bring him back. Um, but just for, you know, focusing on, on Shohei and Juan Soto, I really don't think that the opportunity to get both will be provided to us. I think one is going to be, I, I can almost assure one will be with us. I really do believe one of Juan Soto or Shohei Otani will be with us, not only next year, but in the foreseeable future. Um, because let's say, like I said, you know, if Juan Soto finishes top three in MVP voting again this year, you're going to drop 40 million a year on him, 37, whatever it is. And you're going to be happy about it because that's going to be a consistent thing from Juan Soto. Does he play pretty trash defense? Yeah, kind of. But I think his defense is going to be a lot better in left field this year, whereas in right, right echo, it's so much ground to cover. But left field, it's so much smaller. I mean, Jerks and Profar looked fantastic in left field last year, and he was 
never really an outfielder. And we always used to complain about his outfield defense. He looked great in left field at Petco last year. So I, I think that's going to help Juan Soto in the defense department. And if he's able to put up a decent, just, you know, de- decent defensive numbers and he's able to go out there, put up a seven, eight war again. Yeah. You're going to drop that money on him because the Padres have shown that if you play good, you're going to get extended. Dude, Fernando was phenomenal his rookie year. What didn't play almost the whole second half of the season was out from August onward, then played a 60, 59 games. I forgot why he missed that one game, but he played 59 games. And then they said, all right, 14 years for you, 365 million, whatever it is. They dropped a bag on him because he played so well. Same thing with Manny Machado. They dropped a bag on him because he played so well. Same thing for Xander Bogarts. Came off a six-war season. Sign him. The Padres reward you for good play. Joe Musgrove got $20 million a year for – that was only after like a season and – like a season in two months, a season in three months, something like that. Um, same thing with you, Darvish. So they sh- they're showing as long as you play good for the organization, they're going to do everything they can to bring you back. If Juan Soto does that. I can almost guarantee he's going to be in a Padres uniform for the foreseeable future. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, this is a big year for Juan Soto. I think it's one of those years where it's not his walk year, but um, it- it's getting pretty close. And Another guy, Blake Snell, is getting it is his walk year. Let's see how he does. Um, I don't think he'll be a Padre next year, but I'm excited to see how well he does in a walk year. There's a bunch of guys that the Padre might consider throwing money at. If Blake Snell wins a Cy Young, finishes top five in Cy Young voting, I wouldn't doubt that they try and extend him, even though it's I think it's unlikely. Maybe they'll try. But Juan Soto's yeah. gonna be our top priority for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think so too. I I do really, really wonder what happens because I, I'll say this: I, I think like right now Juan Soto immediately with his contract, um, with the Machado contract, he becomes the number one priority. However, the idea that if you sign Otani, you would also have Soto overlap with Otani for one year, like if you had to pick one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not good to be like, oh, we're going all in one year. I actually don't hate that idea of like the, of like team building. Players. Those are the players like, to go all in. On. Yeah, exactly. It's like okay, well, if we get Otani instead of Soto, there's one year where we have them both. That's pretty yeah. insane. So I think that's like actually like I don't know. To me, that's a fair thing to bring up, even though I think it's like you shouldn't go in all in on one year. But <laughs> I, I think that they're probably going to try to really go after Soto. I mean, we've talked about it. I told you I still think that they're going to – that they, in theory, they want to go and sign both. But I told you I don't think that they're going to be able to get all of them. Like, I, I always said, like, two out of three, that's what you're shooting for. Yes. Well, you just got one of them in Machado. So you, if you can get one of the other and you said you feel confident that they're going to be able to get at least one of them, that's insane. Like, that's still a super good core. Um, and let's say it is Soto. You have Soto and Fernando as your building blocks on your offense. Let's say Fernando fiz- figures it out upstairs after last year, right? You really don't have any issues with Fernando. <laughs> that is, that's the best young building core you could have, right? Like, of is there? I'm trying to think of other teams like that are that are young and have like good players. Like, no, no duo in baseball is better than Fernando. T- I mean, it's really a a quartet or whatever you want to call it. But if you're looking at young duos around the league, no duo is better than Fernando and and Soto. Like. Vladdy and like Bichette is pretty good, like not as good. Like it, like you can bring up other names, but it's like it's ne- they're always like ah, not as good, not as nope. good. Like every time, so. Dude, Machado and Tatis were already possibly the best <laughs> duo, and yes. I mean you're not necessarily replacing Manny, but it, it, if you're going based off young duos or duos in general, it's it's Machado or, and Soto or Soto and Tatis or Tatis and Machado. Well, however you want to match it up they're the i firmly believe the best yeah yeah and uh, i see one comment here the only young team is the braves i mean the braves yeah but also like the who's the braves other guy besides acuna like who would you it used to be ozzy's not young yeah ozzy's um like hmm. guys will emerge don't get me wrong 
I think I think their core, I think they're way better of a team, not a team, but I think they're more well rounded than we are. But we're if we're talking just stars, yeah, Padres, they they got it going on. Yeah, because the Padres, I wouldn't say the Padres' whole team and whole roster is necessarily no. young. Like it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they're two, like two of their young superstars. That's that's one. Riley Strider, yeah. Otani or Soto, yeah. I don't know. I think Otani or Soto. I think it's tough. I think you're just gonna go after both. Like you're gonna mm-hmm. see what happens. Yeah. And if I, like I said before, I told you, I said if you somehow get both, you just say, all right, we're gonna have to take the L for a few years, and then we're yeah, gonna trade yeah. Bogarts because <laughs> there's no, or you just trade Bogarts. So, sorry, man. Like you're you're here last. Like yeah, oh, Otani, but. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, if you're looking short term, Otani helps you way more um, because he's an ace. But if you're looking long term, Soto. It also totally depends on what Otani would want. Because what if Otani signed a two year, one hundred million dollar contract, bro? <laughs> like, 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 like a like a deal like how you're talking about with the opt outs, where it's like, okay, he he signed, he technically signed it a ten year, four hundred, like Otani did, right? Yeah. But it's really like. There's 50 million over the first two years, and then you're gonna he's gonna opt out, of course. Like it could be one of those. I don't know. I, I'm really intrigued to see what Otani wants to do because there's also rumors like the Angels are trying to extend him. I feel like he is not gonna be an angel yeah. anymore. It's like his whole market is so fascinating too, because he's just like so like dedicated to the sport and to like being the best, where it's it, I, I don't know. It, it's really interesting to see what he'll do. I think yeah. I think it's gonna be so fun. We were talking about it. Otani watch. Otani yeah. watch. Will be, will be Otani watch. It's uh, it's either gonna be make Otani a Padre twenty twenty four or make Soto a Padre twenty twenty. Or sorry, make yeah twenty twenty four, or make Soto a Padre twenty twenty four slash twenty twenty five. Um, it's it's an interesting thing with with uh, Shohei Otani. He's gonna be twenty nine going into free agency. How many teams are going to be willing to throw fifty million plus at him, knowing what if he's not pitching in when he's 36, 37, maybe thirty eight? What if he's not pitching anymore? It, it's it's a really really interesting thing with Shohei Otani because you look at the numbers up front and you're like, wow, this guy definitely deserves ten years, five hundred million type of thing, but. Are there really going to be teams willing to throw ten years at him? And and I feel like, and I'll also say this: when you're looking at these contracts, who do you think is a safer safer guy to, to lock up for ten years? Otani or Soto? Soto, like oh, easily, Soto, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah, it's, for I sure. don't even think it's that close. No, it's not. No, it, it's for sure Soto. Um, it, it's just a weird thing because even if you're not willing to throw ten years at Otani, you might have to. You might yeah. have to say, "Well, shoot." If he's not pitching in five, six, seven years, I'm going to be paying a fifty million for a DH. Yeah, I do wonder too because for the Padres, the other thing is if the Padres. Here's the other aspect of that: if the Padres are like in a you know like a, a battle in terms of like who's going to offer more to Otani, and it's between them and the Dodgers, both teams have an incentive to put more money on the table to not mm-hmm. let the other team get them, like. Because For all sure. of a sudden, especially with baseball now, like you don't want to be in the wild card. It is a huge disadvantage for your chances of winning a World Series. A th- a three games on the road, like that's not that's a that sucks uh, compared I, to a bye. I thought uh, I thought the Padres were cooked. <laughs> I really did. I was scared, man, because in New York facing the Mets. I mean, I think I think before that series started, I did say, well, they are the Mets. So maybe I expected us to win, but I, that doesn't mean I wasn't, dude, that, that was a very terrifying series. And, and I know in the NL, at least both the wildcard teams made it. He kind of is, um, both the wildcard teams made it, but <sighs> it's a little tougher now just cause the wildcard game is now, or the wild, it's now a wildcard series, all three on the road, meaning you have to use your three top pitchers. And then you have to go face the one or the two seed with your number four as your as in your game one. For us, it was Mike Clevenger. We got we I mean we, we stood no chance. So no, you're you're absolutely right. 